Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Khush amdeed. Ji ayanu khuyam wa rikhu pa khair raagli. Welcome to Well This Morning with Shilsa Hashmi, ladies and gentlemen, on a beautiful, beautiful Friday morning. Please do remember us all in your, in your prayers because definitely it is Friday and we definitely make special prayers on Friday. That is why I ask. So ladies and gentlemen, for all of those who do live in the Twin Cities, last night we had such a horrible thunderstorm over here. I mean, uh, just in the morning I was coming to my work and trees were all over the roads. And, you know, this was such a mess, especially in Islamabad, in some major parts of Islamabad. I really hope all of you are safe out there and I really hope people that you are related to are safe as well. Take care of yourselves. Well, what are we talking about today? We will definitely get back to that. But I have a small news for you and I just read this early in the morning. Archaeologists in Peshawar have actually found out a site which happened to be a workshop in the Indo-Greek era. This was centuries ago. How amazing is that? I mean, this was near Hayatabad area in Peshawar. So, well, of course, Pakistan happens to be, you know, so culturally diverse. We have so many things, and especially now coming to archaeology, when the southern Punjab itself is so popular with its historical culture, then we have Monjadaro and Harappa, and now finding these things in Peshawar, it's so good to look at. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today is the 26th of April, and in 1970, there's an organization. It's called World Intellectual Property Organization. It was, uh, you know, established in 1970, and later on, they themselves decided that they need to observe a day where they need to, you know, celebrate the creativity of one's mind. That is how they decided there should be a specific day, especially in April, to celebrate World Intellectual Property. Uh, when you're talking about intellectual property for all the people who don't know out there, including me, I'll tell you, I, to be very honest, I did have an idea what intellectual property was, but to think there was a, a specific day given to it, I mean, it's definitely, definitely so amazing because we do need awareness about it. So, uh, as I already mentioned, this is the creativity of your mind. It includes all forms of arts. I mean, it's paintings, it's singing, it's acting, and then there are trademarks and everything, copyrights for your own music, for your own game if you're a sports person. And I mentioned a sports person because this year specifically the theme of World Intellectual Property Day is related to sports. This year, we are celebrating the sports industry because, you know, a few, to, a few years back, this was in the last century when we spoke about sports. This was just a game, you know, probably cricket, few men playing cricket for, you know, their neighborhood. But now it has become so global that so many people are stakeholders in it. I mean, there are stadiums, then there are people who own the stadiums. There are marketing brands who are associated with the teams. There are brands that the, or, uh, you know, athletes themselves have created. So specifically, we are definitely, you know, celebrating sports, but but also we will be discussing what the prevalent condition of the protection of intellectual property rights in Pakistan is. And to talk about that and also to raise awareness about that, to share their own journey, we've been joined by some guests who are definitely so apt for this. One of them will happen to be a part of my team as well. He is the coordinator of my show. Uh, but before that, I feel like ladies first, so I shall be, you know, introducing Mehroz over here, who happens to sit on my right hand side. She happens to be a public speaker as well. Mehroz Jarar Ali, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, how are you? <laughs> I'm absolutely great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm so glad that you uh, called me today on this if, in this topic We're so and this pleased show. To have you. And the reason for that is because I always heard about intellectual property rights, right? Right. And, and now we need to discuss it. We have to definitely discuss it. will come we to the discussion. It. But next to my rose, ladies and gentlemen, as I already mentioned, the coordinator of my show happens to be an aviation photographer. How amazing is that? This is none other than Dawar Khan. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. Wa alaikum assalam. How do you feel like being this side of the show? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Something unique after really? five months. <laughs> after five months, absolutely. Yeah. Because he, ladies and gentlemen, you know, there's a huge team that goes, that goes behind our show. Shazad and I are definitely the face of the show that we you know communicate with you interact with you but Sasha used him goes behind the show as well in the control room and that is one of the people so to begin with uh, you know you happen to be a public speaker and you happen to be an aviation photographer Absolutely. so I feel like you definitely do have a creativity of your own mind and if someone was to violate that and you know someone was to take that away from you and be like hey I'll take the you know ownership of it you would definitely be discouraged definitely. so why do you feel like there was an uh, let's say a need to observe this day uh, the need to observe this day is, I'll give a personal example. Okay. So uh, when I have to go out and prepare for my speech, I, if it's a 40 minute speech, hmm. so I'm preparing for about 38 hours and that includes the research, reading of books, drafting, planning, uh, putting the presentation hmm. together and all of the components. And if, uh, if I'm putting in all that effort and 
then someone else just watches my video mm. or watches my work or looks at my work and then takes that away in two, three minutes and has the ability to memorize that right. stuff. And, you know, they're smart enough to, you know, repeat all of that yeah. like a parrot. Then yeah. um, it's very discouraging for me. And it has it's, happened it's to It's heartbreaking. It, it has happened to wow. me. Uh, it has happened to me in the sense that um, uh, when I started off in university, uh, mm. I did a topic on uh, confidence. Okay. And it was, uh, it was a very small speech in three to five minutes, but it took a lot of time. Yeah. Honestly, three minutes, it took a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't imagine it would. Wow. But um, by the time someone else <laughs> um, in another semester was saying word to words, the same speech as I had, yeah. it made me feel really violated. I wow. felt like, it, why should I put my creative side out there if someone can just come along, string along, and just and not take even it away. credit you? Not even credit me. Yeah. That's the main part. Crediting Absolutely. other people and their work is very important. Definitely. It's about consent because you know. Um, the other person should be aware of the risks and benefits of something that's their property absolutely. being taken away. Absolutely, absolutely. Exactly. Beautifully explained, uh, Meroos, but moving on to you, Dawar. Yeah. Uh, before you, you know, tell me why do we need to celebrate this day, I feel like you should tell me how you started the journey of being an aviation photographer because, uh, you know, every other day I feel like, Meroos, we come across pictures of, you know, planes in the air on our Definitely. Instagram and on our Facebook. And we but just we never know who these people are yes. and you are one of them. So how did it start? Actually, my home was quite in the vicinity of an airbase okay. uh, in Rawalpindi. So I, uh, when I was you know, three, four years old, I used to see the planes taking off uh, every day, every morning, and facing the sunburns since that age. Okay. <laughs> so after, after that, when uh, my father had a, a phone with a camera, yeah. then I used to video, video the planes and everything. Then uh, came the, my equipment, right. normal camera. Okay. So then I uh, switched to a professional gear hmm. uh, two years ago. And now, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good with the... Wow. Uh, of course with you the, are, mashallah. Thing. So yeah. how has it been? I mean, do you enjoy doing it? And did this ever happen to you? I mean, no names, of course, you don't have to yeah. cite, uh, you know, uh, anyone. But um, someone stole your pictures without even asking you and then didn't even credit you? Absolutely. Recently, there was an incident that uh, my photograph uh, of a plane, yeah. a solo plane, that was captioned, that was initially stolen by someone. Yeah. And then it was captioned uh, that... Ami dahi so oh. that was quite uh, that was quite absurd to me that why would somebody yeah. disrespect the copyrights mm. uh, why would somebody uh, you know <coughs> disrespect a photograph mm. right. so that was the whole uh, thing uh, that I, I wanted to talk on as well in the show yeah. that intellectual property respecting the copyrights it is quite important for for uh, so, any so admin important. of the page of the Facebook or Instagram. definitely and you know since we are talking about intellectual rights uh, ladies and gentlemen a trademark happens to be a part of it as well and I just came across news last night Night, you know, um, PepsiCo is suing farmers in India because they are now growing potatoes similar to what they use for making Lay's chips. Okay. And that is amazing to look at because they claim this is our trademark. So they just picked out that they, we are, only we are going to grow these potatoes. Mm. <laughs> First of all, of course, I mean, it does sound ridiculous, but also this is the protection of rights we are talking about. Definitely. And they know their rights. But talking about rights protection in Pakistan, what do you feel like the prevalent condition is? Or did you ever feel like if you know violation did happen to you you would be able to stand against it yeah. legally uh, I would personally think um, we are very fragile in the legal sector yeah. right now there are so many aspects that we haven't covered okay obviously because we are a third world country let's admit to the yeah. fact that that's the truth but there are so many aspects that we haven't covered like if uh, someone violates a, as he's a photographer if someone takes his picture and he needs to sue them he needs hmm. to where will, a lot of people will just think it's an absurd, absurd idea. They'll be like, right. it's just a picture, you know? Exactly. It's just a picture. You can take another one. And, and so what? Mm. Um, and the whole concept of let it go, you know, let it be. Right. It's all right. So, um, yes, there's, there's a lot of fragility in the legal system. And I think it's very tough to put yourself out there hmm. um, um, because I think the, pe the person who has come up with the creative idea would suffer more than the person who has stolen it right. because of uh, the power power there, there's always a hmm. power difference uh, a lot of the time it tends to be the powerful people that tend to take yes. uh, ideas creative ideas because they Without see potential questioned yes because they see the potential in that idea hmm. and they know there's a gap in the market that person probably cannot see because right. of lack of investment finance and so much more hmm. so they tend to take that idea hmm. and that person is then left out in the society to deal with that hmm. it's psychologically damaging not oh. just um, you know uh, financially because they could earn a lot they could generate a lot of revenue from just having right. their idea put out there because uh, in the contemporary era we've got um, 
so many things that are happening, being creative yeah. is very hard. Absolutely. So when someone yeah. comes out with something creative, yeah. they need these laws. They need definitely. to be protected. Definitely. Definitely. What do you feel about this? Story? I second this lady absolutely because there is a sincere, you know, serious need to amend the laws hmm. and bring up the copyright laws. Yes. Because being a photographer, I can feel that pain, right. that pinching, that whatever happens when your photographs are stolen. Hmm. And it's quite uh, common and often uh, these days, people are uh, stealing the pictures on right. the Facebook and Instagram. So I, w I would second this lady overall. I'd like to also add that okay. uh, I, I was thinking last night about this and uh, the whole um, uh, idea of um, uh, broadcasting and media rights, all of that hmm. has hmm. changed, right? And um, and the reason for that is social media. Yeah. Where social media plays a very positive role, it yeah. plays a very negative role. Uh, sports, for for example, okay. where uh, their invest investors are investing for broadcasting rights, media rights, image rights. Someone in the stadium can just get up and do a live video and put that all right, out there, right? Absolutely. Because uh, when you're putting out broadcasting, uh, I was I was reading up uh, the media rights about the media rights, and okay. it was National Football League uh, okay. of the U.S. and they apparently just for their media rights hmm. estimated it's two hundred twenty-five million dollars that they earn hmm. annually, wow. and then they give that to teams. And for their broadcasting rights, yeah. they earn <laughs> about six billion dollars just wow. on their broadcasting and media rights. Two hmm. aspects, right? Hmm. And if um, if social media is giving us that platform to violate that, mm. who is accountable in social media? Right. Who is accountable That's for so Facebook true. and mm. Instagram and Snapchat putting all these stuff stuff out live out there? So people right. are not going to tune into TVs mm. anymore mm. to watch that. Stuff. That's so true. But Davra, you know, since your work is usually found on social media, thank you for linking me to it, yeah. my Rose. Um, you know, I have definitely studied it as well, and I know for a fact that uh, cyber harassment laws are definitely in place. And since yeah. you are, you know, a lot of people actually steal pictures of your face even to use on their <laughs> profiles yes. which is definitely illegal and yeah. prohibited Absolutely. so do you feel like if something like this happened to you on a major scale with your pictures the photographer mm -hmm. uh, the you know photography that you do uh, would you take a legal stand actually you the, do have the, the right the idea you, especially is on social media how, how many people you can take the legal stand against yeah. mm. because there is a lot of uh, uh, you know sort of you you call awam right. on the instagram and facebook who is stealing the pictures and you are so done with this thing but it is about the moral ethics hmm. that hmm. respect the person respect the copyrights that's the right. uh, entire scenario that the nation or the people shall realize hmm. you know uh, without okay. this realization i think the laws cannot also work properly okay okay that makes sense so since we are ladies and gentlemen when you talk about property it's something physical that you own but intellectual property uh, yesterday i was discussing this with my friends and some of them were like what even is the concept of intellectual property i mean anything that you are generating not with your hands but with your mind my brain is, you know, spending hours doing that. Yes. Definitely, I'm going to take credit definitely. for that. So um, I definitely, you know, uh, ab absolutely forgot what I was going to ask. Okay, found it. Copyrights, yes. <laughs> um, so, you know, I was reading about copyrights. This was during my bachelor's, of course. And it said if a person, uh, you know, passes away and has produced any sort of art, music and whatever, um, 50 years after he has passed away, anyone can take, you know, charge of whatever his work was. Yes. And lately we do see, you know, there's people like uh, Nusrat Fateli Khan Saab and people all over the globe are using his music. Uh, most of the time with consent, definitely from his family, but sometimes even without consent because we do even come across news that does happen. Being a Pakistani, I feel bad about that. What do you say? Dawa, let's start with you. I, I would say that singing is something quite crucial as well. Yeah. You know, it is almost stolen everywhere in the hmm. world. But uh, about Nusrat Fateli Khan, uh, he needs to be, you know, acknowledged always, yes, always. You know, without the acknowledgement, uh, stealing the content of hmm. this much big singer, he's so famous. Right. He was uh, once <coughs> in Japan as well. He was taken for some movie, I, I, I believe, in the, in, in the stories of uh, Nusrat I read. Okay. So um, I, I, I believe that singing is something more crucial than photography. Hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. So Meros and Dawr now here's the question. So you know, since you both are sort of artists, you create your own stuff, right? So you. Uh, being the educated lot, luckily privileged ones, do expect people to respect your privacy yeah. or, you know, respect the work that you've created. But unfortunately, so many segments of the society out there don't even realize there's a need to do that. I'll tell you, uh, let's talk about <coughs> cosmetics industry. I'm not going to name out anything, but a lot of makeup products, cosmetics in Pakistan, are dupes of the original products. Meadows, you will agree with me, Definitely. you know, <laughs> right? Um, so, okay, everyone knows Kylie Jenner and Kylie Lip Kits and everything. And I watched a video which I, where, you know, Kylie Jenner did a crackdown on a random market where there were fake lip kits selling. 
Imagine if she comes to Pakistan <laughs> and comes across all the lip kits selling over here for less than half the price that she actually does. What will happen? So, Tavru, where do you feel like we need to start with realizing as a community, as a nation? I would again respect others to yeah, be respected, right? Res respect. I, I would second this uh, thought, and I would again refer to my initial statement that uh, it is about the realization. Hmm. If hmm. the uh, uh, manufacturers in Pakistan and the people who are doing it, if they are not realizing this, then uh, the the laws, the copyrights, they will not be mattering enough. Right. Yeah. So uh, realizing as on a uh, on a mass scale hmm. in the so society, this will you know um, gradually change the trends. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Without this the trends would remain the same and uh, every day you will see the uh, replicas and these things coming mm -hmm. up which are uh, discouragement for mm. the creativity the theme Absolutely, of today respecting creativity the creativity would be, would be diminishing with time if this thing will continue to happen true I, that's I so say. true what about you uh, i just want to add two things one thing is um, i second him about the realization part uh, awareness is very important uh, up until organizational level these people are grown-up people. Yeah. They're adults. They should not be made to realize about ethical... And they should know these things at uh, this they're point. They're right? to produce their own right. stuff. Right, <laughs> right. So uh, uh, the realization and awareness starts at a very smaller level. From schools, colleges and universities, these things need to be addressed apart from academics, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, another issue that I do understand is that... Um, uh, in third world countries, yes, yeah. there's not enough finance to buy things. So okay. then they should be alternates for people who cannot afford stuff like that. Right. So that instead, is what I was coming yeah, to. Instead, yes. instead of uh, copying things uh, completely, bring up an original idea that facilitates your society right, and right, your absolutely. people. Absolutely. So you're looking at domestic products then rather than international products. Yeah, and you know, Meros, that actually leads me to my next question again. Thank you for linking me. You know, since you mentioned we... Uh, you know, it, there's no shame in accepting that Pakistani nation people living in Pakistan, a, m a huge number of them, need products that are, again, affordable. Uh, we were talking about, you know, replicas and everything. Every other day, uh, you know, some amazing Pakistani designers come out with their new designs and, you know, products. And the very next day, we have their replicas. <laughs> um, at such an affordable price, Miros, that a person even living on the streets can afford Definitely. to wear designer, right? Definitely. Good for them. Good, good for, them. for them. I mean, they want to feel good for them. But again, they're copying the design. So why shouldn't we enable them, them in a way that they come up with their own creativity on such low prices, right? Right. But uh, I think the issue is, again, what you said, they're lazy. The yeah. manufacturers are lazy. <laughs> if they've got an idea out there, there are not enough legal uh, rules and rights out there to uh, hold them accountable. Right. So they're like, why should we bother? You know, might as well just pick up this design and put it out there for uh, most of the population to mm -hmm. afford it. Because mm -hmm. most of the population cannot afford yeah, high-end, high-street brands. Mm -hmm. And they have hearts, they have feelings, they right. want to be part of good things, they want to look good. So what they, they exploit these mm. factors. Right. They know that there's no the legal final. loophole. Yes, Just, you exactly, know, gaps. That's, yeah. that's what a lot of uh, organization, <laughs> businessmen, that's the whole game, you know, find mm. the gap in the market right. and then target that. Yeah. So that's the issue that then at that point we need legal bindings. Right, absolutely. So Davar and Miro, since you both have been students, now the issue that I'm now going to say, I'm pretty sure you both have faced as well. So I was studying multimedia journalism in my later years of bachelor's and one of my class fellows, you know, we were supposed to, of course, you know, write stories and get them published and everything. One of them wrote an amazing piece. And then my teacher took credit for it. He got it published under his name. Yes. I mean, it's so unfair to the person himself who came up with all the hard work, who went to these places to find out the facts. But this does happen, I mean, usually in schools and universities as well. Have you ever been prey to it? If not, how do you feel like we can stop this? Tower, let's start with you. Actually, uh, when you are a junior in the university, seniors can use you at times for the research work. Yeah, so they can they can ask you to make the research papers for them in 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 a friendship gesture. Yeah, okay. But this is quite you know uh, I I believe it is quite illegal because the credit is not going to you. Right. You are not getting any sort of incentive to it. So incentive is uh, a, a must give thing to a person who is using his creativity, doing the research, doing the hard work. Hmm. So I uh, regularly see the stolen content on research, plagiarized content as well in yes, the research papers. Um, <laughs> that's quite uh, you know a, a disaster. 
disaster to a person who has done it. Absolutely. So you being a student as well, I know that. I know, it has happened to me too. And to yeah. be honest, I even have committed plagiarism myself because <laughs> let's face it, I mean, every other day we have to do assignments. It's so boring to work. I hate studying, to be very honest. And then I j it's so convenient to just open Google and find the first thing, you know, perfect thing and just copy it. But again, it's wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Never do that. This is not a good thing that I do. What, what do you think about um, this? For the first question, basically, um, yes, I... I wouldn't name anyone, obviously, yeah. <laughs> but I've seen uh, certain uh, professionals actually uh, hire students to do their research work and work that they will publish under their name. So technically the effort is the students, yeah. but they publish it under their name, which right. is absolutely wrong. We, until unless, if you're giving that person credit for it, fair enough. It's cool. Makes yeah. sense. <laughs> but again, if you're not giving them credit, then how how does it sit well with you owning someone else's work? One right. thing. The second thing is when we talk about plagiarism in, at university level, um, I think, again, the issue is with the system. Okay. Um, I, I'm not 100 percent. I'm not saying that what you what students do is right but I think that the issue is with mm. the system because we're not uh, trained to work practically right, right. Um, throughout our college years that is so true right? we've never been I mean we've not I can't say never but usually we're not taught right we're not independent workers yeah, right that's true, so I my teenage years were spent in the UK I was I was privileged enough to have that opportunity right so um, I have always been an independent worker. Wow. So when I get <coughs> research work um, assignments or presentations, mm. my first thought is not to go to my uh, to my friends or team members or whatever. My first thought is to get down to work, research, put my idea. How can I make it mm. different? How can I uh, how can I be different from the rest of the students? Mm. Mm. Put my personal touch right, on it. Right. Absolutely. So, but that that has been built. Throughout my teenage years, yes. as it, throughout it my GCSEs time, right? and A levels, yes, yeah. it definitely it takes time. Overnight. And our system is just about drilling information into the minds, but not letting children think independently on Absolutely. their own. Absolutely. So that's one thing that I definitely <coughs> think that needs to be addressed as well. Beautifully put, my Rose. But to be the end, since we are about to wrap the segment, this is for both of you. Uh, a few years down the lane, where do you see your work going? And also, uh, Davin and Rose, since you have definitely faced it yourself, you know, violation of your personal property, intellectual property, uh, what do you expect from the authorities, from the right concerned authorities, to, you know, develop any sort of laws to protect people like yours works? Uh, let's start with you, Davin. Um, I would request the uh, people who are in charge for this thing, you know, especially the social media. Uh, they do respect that a person has the copyrights, but despite the reporting, the content doesn't go. Hmm. The content several times doesn't go. Okay. So uh, about the about the government. Yeah. Okay. Well, that would be also have your pictures. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that is me photographing the helis uh, recently on the 23rd March. Wow. Yeah. So uh, must next. be so much fun though. Yeah, these are the J10s. This J10s beautiful. Uh, recently. And I'm just imagining the, you know, magnitude of a lens man. <laughs> yeah. This is the uh, wow. Chief's plane, Flares F-16. This is so amazing. Yeah. These are the uh, planes which come down uh, share uh, wow. during the performance. Wow. Our producers are saying, we didn't even know you did this work. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is so martial amazing and it must yeah. be also so thrilling to watch, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. These are brave hearts wow. from Rizalpur. Beautiful. Perfect. This is so beautiful. And you know, it's work like this, Dawar, that why wouldn't I copy this? Uh, exactly, <laughs> it's so appealing. <laughs> Marshall is so beautiful. Crossing from the sun, uh, J-10s. Yeah. This is absolutely thrilling. Okay, so you were saying, you know, uh, how would you want the authorities to sort of build laws around this? I believe uh, they shall at least uh, secure the people who are doing creative work. Yeah. Yeah, from some sort of law. The amendments are coming. The system is changing a little bit. Okay. But it is not with the pace it should be. Hmm. Uh, this is my humble take on this, that the government shall realize something on the social media as right. well. Right. The laws, the amendments, yeah. Right, definitely. Thank you so much for saying that. What about you, Miro? Um, I feel, uh, <laughs> well, five years from now or ten years from now, I would definitely want to be a successful public speaker in the sense that I would want to make an impact on young people's life right because uh, I'm a young person and I understand how it feels hmm. regarding certain issues like this as well it's, okay. it's a youth issue definitely is um, and with authorities I think as much as I understand the legal part I personally believe that you have to create empathy you hmm. have to create certain feelings within the population right. so when they're in positions of <coughs> Uh, where they have to be very responsible. Okay. They can take that independent decision. Yes, mm. not 100% will, but right. at least 80 or 70% are working towards 
knowing the difference between ethical and unethical work. Absolutely. Right. And um, also, one more thing for the authorities that I want to add is, yeah. according to the theme, definitely it's sports. Um, the sports industry is huge. Yeah. And we need more of it in Pakistan. So The true. reason is so because true. if we integrate tourism <laughs> and sports together, we are bringing so much revenue. Definitely. Uh, people, PSL is the greatest example, but if you look yeah. at the World Cup that happened last year in Russia, there were people from India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, one yeah, of my best of friends was there. Right. Uh, all of them were there. And if, if they're doing nothing but just buying souvenirs, right. they are uh, contributing towards your economy. Absolutely. Thank so, you so much for saying that. Yeah, thank and thank you so much for being on my show, especially early in the morning. You both were a delight to talk to. Thank you so much. So ladies thank and gentlemen, we definitely me. did discuss World Intellectual Property Day. And you know, it's not just something that you yourself own. If you're a part of Pakistan and if you're a part of any sort of intellectual property, you are directly or indirectly adding to the economy of the country as well. You're bringing name to your country. We will definitely have another interesting and, uh, you know, some uh, very insightful discussion in the next segment. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Good morning.